On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make this minimalistic sailboat digital art painting. This is episode number 43 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 43 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Today I'm going to show you how to make a minimalistic digital painting of a sailboat. Now I will link this image in the uh, description below so you can download it and you can follow along with me if you would like to. The other thing I'm going to do is list all the adjustments that I've made in Topaz Studio 2 and give you all my settings for those adjustments just in case you need something to reference to. That way you can just really watch the video and enjoy it and then when you want to try it on your own you can go ahead and you'll have those adjustments that I've used. They're suggestions, you know, you can alter them, change them any way you want, turn it into your own piece of work. But it's just a good reference point. Just to give you a little backstory with this video, I wanted to do like a minimalistic uh, water type uh, painting for a tutorial. I came across this stock image and I started playing with it. I started using that technique that I showed you the other day for that fall painting where I was, you know, using the precision detail filter to take away detail. And I came up with this and then what did I do next? Then I sent it into back into Topaz Studio 2 and I start I added the impression filter, added some really nice cool uh, texture to the background, and I thought, oh, that looks pretty cool. Then I brought it back into Photoshop, and then I started doing some little bit of painting on some of the areas in the image. And I thought, oh, that's looking pretty cool. So I'm thinking of a future video coming up where I show you how I do some painting on images. And then I messed with the sky a little bit and just did a little cleanup in the background. But I started out with this image and I end up with this image. And that's what brought me to this image of this boat in the water. I thought this would be a nice, quiet, minimalistic boat painting. Let me show you how I did it. First off, I duplicated the background layer and called it Topaz Studio 2 so we can send a pixel layer into Topaz Studio 2. And I don't want to send my background layer in. Uh, but I noticed there's a few things here, like see this little thing on the uh, reflection of the water? I didn't like this little line here. And also there's a little, you know, this little white spot here. And there's some kind of like uh, things here that I didn't like and this flag up here. I thought this flag, if it was bigger, I'd keep it, but it's kind of dull and I figured I'm going to remove it. And there's a couple little dust spots up here. And I went ahead and just on this Topaz Studio 2 layer, used the spot healing brush and took care of those problems. And now we're ready to send it into Topaz Studio 2. All we need to do is come up to filter and find Topaz Studio 2. Click on that. We'll launch it and get started. Originally, when I made this painting, I saved it as a look. So I'm going to go ahead and add my look. Uh, just come up here to add look. And I'm going to come under this section called look category, my looks. And it's a drop down. If you click it, you have all these different looks. Now, Topaz Studio 2 comes with a bunch of looks with it as well. And you can save your own looks. And this is one of the looks that I've saved. And... I have one here called Boat Painting and Boat Painting 2. I made a few alterations and I ended up liking this one the best, Boat Painting 2. So let's click on this and you can see there's my result. Now all I need to do is click Apply. Now you have an opacity slider here. If you don't want the full effect on it, you can pull this back a little bit if you want to take the effect slightly off the entire image. But I'm going to leave it up full because that was what I created and that's what I enjoyed. So I'm going to click Apply. And when I do, you're going to see... We have this boat group with all these different filters inside of here. And I'm going to break these filters down one at a time and show you how I did this. And don't forget, these filters will be listed with the adjustments that I made in the description below this video. Let me start out by shutting all these filters off. Now, just come to the eye and click the eye. You'll shut that filter off. We'll come back down to the basic adjustment. Okay, so there's no adjustments on this image right now. I started out with the basic adjustments. And let me turn it on. As you can see... Uh, let's open up basic adjustment just by clicking on it. As you can see here, I just pulled the exposure back. Uh, it starts, starts out at uh, zero here. So if I, right now you see it's at a minus 51. If I double click this, it starts out at zero. I just pulled this back to a minus 51. And that just darkens the image up just a little bit. And the next thing I did was I worked with the clarity adjustment. Let me go ahead and reset this. So clarity, if you move this to the right, it'll bump up your clarity. 
and you can bring more detail out in your image, but you can also take clarity away. So I brought it down to like a minus 47 just to remove some clarity. Because remember, I'm going for a minimalistic type digital painting here. And then uh, highlights, I just pulled my highlights back a little bit to make sure I wouldn't clip my highlights. Now you have a histogram here. If you click it, you can see if you're clipping anything, shadows or highlights. So you can turn that on and off if you like. And the other thing I did was temperature. So let me reset this temperature. So I thought the image needed to be cooled down a little bit for the vision I had for this painting. So I took my temperature and brought it back to like a minus 49. And I thought that just added a little bit of coolness to it. So here's my before and here's my after. But that's my starting point. Just like that fall tutorial I just did, if you saw that, um, I'll link it at the end of this video in case you didn't. Uh, I used precision detail to remove some of the detail from the image. So that's what I did next. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And you can see I just pulled a little bit of detail out. Now let's open up this precision detail so we can see what I've actually done here. On detail, you have overall detail, shadow detail, and highlight detail. I just worked with the overall detail. Now, on the overall small detail, I just took it back to a minus 51. In other words, I'm removing detail. Because, like, if I take it to the right, you can see I can add detail, okay? But I'm using it to remove detail. So, a minus 51. And now the overall medium, it's at a minus 53. Let me go ahead and reset it so you can see. Just double-click detail, you reset it. So if I move it to the right, I can add detail. If I move it to the left, we'll take detail away. And I just took it back to like a minus 53. Okay, just like that. And now let me reset the overall large detail. Double click it. And again, you can add large detail or you can take it away. It can look really nasty when you really take it up. So be careful here. So large detail was like a minus 20. Just took a little bit out on the large detail. And so here's the before and here's the after. But I'm not done there because there's some other adjustments I've done in here as well. And what was that? I um, took my midtones and pulled my midtones back a little bit to a minus 22. So let me go ahead and reset that. So I just darkened up the midtones just a little wee bit, like a minus 22, not much there, very minimal. I didn't touch the shadows, but I opened up my highlights a little bit more and it's a 42. So let me double click this and reset it back. Not much there, just brought a little bit more highlight back into the image. I wanted to keep it nice and airy and open for this scene. I might even take that back to like a 30, 39. I think that looks good. And that's all I did there. So here's the precision detail. Here is the before and here is the after. It just softens it up a bit. Again, I'm thinking minimalistic digital painting. The next step in utilizing the creative toolbox was to use some HSL color tuning. So I added that filter. And by the way, to get your filters, you just come here to add filter and you have all these different filters in here to use. Okay, so that's that's kind of nice, but that's where they're found. But HSL color tuning, let's turn it on and see what I did here. See, I just added some more blue to the image. So let's open up HS color HSL color tuning and see what I've done. This is a nice filter because it breaks down your colors into all your colors, which is under this swatch right here for the overall adjustment of the image for all the colors. And then it breaks all the different colors, maybe not all the colors, but a lot of the different colors, it breaks them down. And the reason I'm using this filter is to bring out some more coolness to the image. So I just went ahead and clicked on the blue swatch and now I'll turn my saturation up. So let me go ahead and reset the saturation. Remember 38. So I just took the saturation, I started to bump it up, and I stopped when I thought I got to the point I like. Now I can add a lot of color, and for your taste, whatever you like, add as much color or less color, whatever you like. But I chose like 38 for mine. And that's all I basically did there, except I did one other thing, and that was, see here where it says suppress artifacts, that's on a 73. Let me reset this. And it resets the zero. So watch the image when I start to pull this to the right. And I'm and again, I'm thinking of softening up this image and taking detail out. Because remember, paintings have less detail than, say, like a photograph. So we need to remove detail. So I set, settled on like 73. Now I can keep taking this to the right and I can take tons of detail out. So that's another way I can get rid of some detail. So we can reduce artifacts and we can remove some detail that way. 
And these are very important little tips when you're working on minimalistic type images. Now, at this point, let's see where we've come from. We started out here. I'm just left clicking and holding down my mouse to see the before. And when I release my left click of my mouse, here's the after. But I really like this image right the way it is. Now, I could stop right here and be done, but I decided to go further. And I thought, well, this time I'm going to add the impression filter to it. Now, remember in that fall scene, if you watched it, I did not add the impression filter and I was happy with it. But on this one, I thought it might need just a little bit more and I thought the impression filter would do something so let me go ahead and turn that on and you can see you know it took it to a whole new direction but I like the soft quietness and let, let me break this filter down for you now I need to click on the impression layer so we can see the impression filter now you'll notice right off the bat my opacity is at 66 percent let me turn it up full just to show you that's what it would look like at the full opacity. Now, you may like that, and that is great. But in my case, I took it back to like a 66. After I made all my adjustments, I pulled it back to a 66. So right there. I could even take it back further if I wanted to take some more of that impression off and just let a little bit of the underlying image show through. But I thought 66 was good. But let me show you what I've done here. Now, I went through all my different uh, stroke types to find the right stroke, you know. And usually what I'll do is I will start out with um, the first type. And I'm just noting what, what type I picked. I picked type 16. So remember that one. Okay, so let me click on type 1. And as I do this, you can see the different effects we can get here. And so just go through here, you know, and sample them out and see which ones that you like. And, and again, you get all kind of different effects. So, you know, this is your play time. You can get in here and really experiment. And this is where it gets fun. And this is part of the joy of editing, where you can see what kind of effect you want to use. But I ended up settling with um, 16. Let's try 17 just for the fun of it. And that's nice too, but I ended up settling with 16. When I'm working with this filter, in fact, all the filters, I usually start at the top and work my way down. So let's start working our way down. So now we have a stroke, and then we can look at the uh, number of strokes, okay? So this is low. I chose low, but let's look at medium and see the difference. And that's nice too, and here's high. So you have different options here, but I chose low. And then we have brush size. 43 is the size I chose, but we can make that brush larger. Okay, or we can make that brush smaller and we can get some really cool effects. So f experiment, play, have fun. This is really where it's at. But I chose a 43. And that's where I ended up on. You got to stop somewhere and that's what I chose. 43. Now paint volume, I didn't use it, but I'll turn it up just to show you what it does. It adds more volume to the paint. Can you see how the paint strokes build up more? So depending, you may want that. If you want it, go ahead and use it. I chose not to use it, but now we have paint opacity. And again, any one of these sliders, if you double click these, it'll set you back to uh, the originating point, which I think this is the originating point. Let me double click paint opacity. Yeah, 50. But if I drag this to the right, and usually I like to pull this one up to add more paint effect, but on this image, I want to keep it nice and quiet, but that's very abstract. And I like that too. But I'm going to go ahead and double click this and leave the paint opacity at 50. You have stroke rotation where you can rotate the strokes. And again, you can get some nice results here. I chose not to use that one. And let's keep moving down. Next is stroke color variation. Now, this is a good one. I really enjoy this one. You got to be careful on this one. I chose 07. It starts out at zero. But watch when I take this up. See how you can add some extra color to your image. You can go crazy and add a ton in here. So, you know, this is your creative toolbox. You put in as much or as little as you want, but I chose 07 or none if you'd like. And then stroke width is important. Now, I did not touch stroke width or stroke length, but all this does is stroke width is how wide your brush stroke is. Stroke length is how long it is. Now, if I take stroke width and move it to the right, you can see how it affects my image, or if I move it to the left, it can really affect it, right? Let me double click it and set it back, and let's do stroke length. Lengthens the stroke or shortens the strokes, whatever you want. I'll double click it, but I didn't touch those two. And then you have a spill, and this is how much the paint spills out. So right now it defaults at zero if I move this to the right. See how the paint starts to really spill out? 
And that can give you some nice effects, or you can move it really to the left and have it hardly spill out at all. But I'm going to leave it at the default setting. And then smudge is another nice one. I didn't use it, but I'll show you the effect of smudge. See how it smudges things out, kind of smooths things out. So if you want it to be smoother, you can pull up that smudge, and sometimes that can be really beautiful. But I didn't use it, but if you decide you want to use it, go ahead and use it. Hold the presses a second. I forgot to show you rotation variation. I know somebody out there said, you missed that one, Dave. Yes, I did. But let me go back and get it now. Rotation variation, 0.06 is my setting. It just uh, varies your uh, stroke rotation. So you can adjust this, and this can be very useful. So I'm just going to pull it up so you can see the effects that it makes. But I chose a 0.06 on this one. Just a slight bit of uh, rotation variation. A lot of times I just use this very minimally. So 0.06 in my case, I think does it. Now I'm going to come to one I don't use very often, and that is the coverage slider. I'm going to show you that one right now. I settled on 28, but normally this will sit up here the whole way up. Now notice when I start to pull this coverage back. When I do, you'll also see we have a couple extra things that pop up here, like coverage transition and coverage center. I didn't play with these two, but let me go ahead and pull this back again, and I'll show you what this does. You see how the paint starts eroding from the edges of the image? You see that? And you can get some really cool dreamy effects. Like, I really like that effect. But I ended up, what did I end up with? A 50, I believe it was. Let me move this over to 50. And here is 50. Now, that doesn't seem right. Nah, I remember now it was 28. So here's 28. Yeah, it just erodes that around the edges a little bit. And it gives it a real nice painterly effect. And then the last thing that I did was in texture. I came down to texture, open up texture here and show you. A couple things I did. I left the background type on solid. I usually change that to original, but I wanted some of this color to show through here. But I did not want to just keep a white canvas background. Now, if you click this uh, drop down here, a color wheel will come up and then you could choose any color for the area that shows through that you want. But I chose like a light blue color. It's all I did there. Just that's the color you see showing through in the background where it erodes through. And then I uh, used a canvas type and that was canvas type three. And I'll just zoom in so you can really see the canvas. Can you see the canvas there? Now, again, I use type 3, and you got a whole bunch of different textures in here that you can use. But I use type 3, but I'll click on some other ones. Here's like type 2. And as you can see, they're different. Here's one that's like bricks, asphalt. You got all kind of really cool textures. Angled weave, asphalt damaged, uh, asphalt rough. And then you can change the texture size and strength. But let me go back here to Canvas 3, and I ended up with a texture size of uh, minus 30 and a strength of 53. Now, again, you could take the strength and you can bump it up to the right and let it show through more or less. And again, I chose 53. I thought it looked really natural. And you can change the size. Right now, this is at a minus 30. Let me go ahead and bump it up. So you can change the size of that canvas as well. But I chose like a minus 30 for mine which is, where are you, right here. Well, that's minus 29, I want minus 30. Right there. And now let me zoom back out. But that adds that nice little canvas. Now we started out looking like this, and now we look like this. And now I'm done with my minimalistic sailboat digital painting. So what I'll do is click accept. That'll send me right back into Photoshop. Here is my before, and here is my after, and that is it. Or is it? You know what? You see this area right here? I don't like this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this area right here. And I'm just going to get a spot healing brush. That's my, my shortcut for that is J. And I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can fix this right here. Because I didn't like that. Just paint over that. This healing brush is great in this area right here as well. Fix that right up and down here. I didn't like that either. And just like that, it's fixed because I didn't like that. But look for those things and spot healing tools are great for fixing those kind of things. And at this point, I would just come up here to file and click on save and save my image out 
with my layers intact and maybe come back and work on it at a different time. But for now, I think I'll call it a day. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Give it a try. You know, you can go ahead and download this stock image. And also, in the description below the video, you'll find the filters I used and all the different... Uh, adjustments I use in each filter and their settings to help you out. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.